Well, hello, and welcome to Preparing to Survive and Thrive Homesteading Channel. So today we are going to be just doing some talking and also doing a prepper video about um, how to pre prepare for a um, elderly family member. Now this could be anybody that's sick, has chronic illness, anything like that. This may be a touchy subject, but in my last video I explained that my mother-in-law had moved in with us um, and we, we are looking for a place to put her a home that's close and that will be able to be better suited to her needs but i've learned a lot since she's been in there of what to do if you have somebody that is chronically ill and or elderly so um yeah we have a lot of other things going on on the home but we'll do other videos discussing them okay so i got my notes and that's an outline to kind of go over what i'm talking about so i don't forget anything so one of the first things I realized is it's a lot to be a caregiver, especially when you really have no clue what you're doing. And first to admit to it, I didn't. And I asked for help and I did receive some. So what I found is um, if you're incontinent, um, whether it's um, bowel movements or um, urination, you need to have something like Depends or um, AKA adult diapers, which apparently they get offended. I will show you up here, hopefully, um, some of the different things that we have going on. Oh, let me shut this. Yep. Um, but we have pads and then there are, what they have is briefs now, which are amazing. So you're actually looking like you're wearing pull-ups for babies but they're for adults and that makes life so, so much easier, definitely. And then you can add extra booster pads to them to help if you're out on a long trip and you can't change all the time. Um, and there's also different thicknesses and there's um, a different feeling to some of them. Some of them are a lot softer and people will want to use them closer to the skin. And I've even seen where they have them for male or for females. So I don't know. Oh yes, I'm also doing the video as you can see in my car, not being a cool YouTuber, just unfortunately my life is so busy. This is about the only time I get an hour where I can sit down and make a video and not lose track of what I'm doing or have to do a whole bunch of editing. Um, we also need like waterproof uh, mattress pads because um, not all the time does the um, Depends or the Briefs or anything like that hold up to what is happening especially overnight so you need to have a mattress cover and you also need to have like a bed pad that's usually about um three by three or three by four something like that that um somebody can sleep on now this is also helpful for children or anybody that would be sick um that would need the extra protection because you don't want to ruin your mattresses especially in a very bad situation such as a grid down or something like that or it'd be very, very hard to do a lot of laundry and clean things up. Um, again, hopefully I will be able to get some um, pictures of them for you. Um, oh, here's a big one. Definitely, definitely a big one. We need to have extra scripts, prescriptions. Um, of course, a lot of people nowadays are on different type of medications, whether it's heart medications, blood pressure, sleeping pills, antidepressants. Um, extra vitamins, um, you, you've got to definitely have some extra scripts on and know how to step the individual down if we ran out of these or what to switch them with. Alternatives are great um, if you know them, pain pills. Um, Over-the-counter ones will take some of the alleviation off if they're used to doing an opiate or something like that. And if you don't have your over-counter pain meds, then you'll probably also want to do something like wild lettuce. Um, there are other different types of pain, pain, natural pain medicines that you can look them up. I know I have wild lettuce and I use that while I um, was sitting on the couch with a broken ankle here a few months ago. Mobility accesses. Um, you might need canes, walkers, wheelchairs and different medical equipment what you might need if somebody um, has sleep apnea you'll need a breathing apparatus to help keep them alive which unfortunately that also goes with you also need the electrical backups in order to be able to run this machine 
you might need a certain type of bed where they can sit up and at night instead of not laying flat down or have a recliner that they can recline in to sleep instead of being flat on their back. Okay, what else? Oh, things to clean their dentures. Um, I never thought about this. Yes, you can use um, Pepsodent or different things like that. I, I don't know all the denture cleaners. That's what we've been doing. They're, they're pretty much little bubbles that help clean the dentures and stuff like that. A different type of toothbrush. Now, in a pinch, you can use some vinegar and baking soda to get the bubbles and the fizziness going and all that stuff to clean the denture. And then just take some um, hot soapy water and scrub them good with a normal toothbrush, something like that. That would help keep your mouth clean. And if you did get anything that might hurt also, which brings me to their dietary requirements. I'm talking fast again. Um, when you have dentures, apparently it's hard to chew some meats and stuff like that. So the meats need to be maybe a little softer cooked. Um, we also might need softer foods in general. Cut up the foods very small. Coral on the cob apparently will rub your gums raw when you have dentures. So that kind of needs to be cut off the cob. There may be some things that they cannot eat that would react with um, their medication, such as grapefruit juice you cannot normally drink within two hours after taking thyroid medicine or different other medications. I don't know the list, different things you look up. So if you have an elderly person in your group or anybody that's on a different prescription meds, please find out what interacts with them and prep accordingly for the food needs or the vitamin needs that they will need. Okay. Okay, medical procedures. Um, you might have to, if somebody has difficult swallowing, you might need to learn the Heimlich remover. And also if there's a different way you need to do it, if they're elderly or even for a baby, instead of just picking them up and doing a thrust up underneath their diaphragm to get them to expel the food, you might have to do find out different ways to do it. Now I did talk to a medical professional. They said with an adult, um, it's normally the same way that you would do it with anybody, even if they are elderly, just maybe be a little bit more gentle if possible. Um, so you don't break a rib or anything. They may have a bone density issue. Um, also CPR, make sure you know how to do that. Um, in case somebody would fall, bang their head, stop breathing, slip in the shower, the bathtub, anything like that. Um, just know these medical things. You should know them anyhow if you um, are taking care of anybody other than yourself. And if you're taking care of yourself, you might want to figure out a way to do the Heimlich maneuver um, by yourself. Yes, you can um, kind of push yourself into a corner of a cabinet in order to thrust the air out of your lungs to stop choking. I do know that one. Okay, now if you have somebody that is overweight and they have to lay down a lot or they're in that one position, seating position or laying position, um, for a long period of time, you got to watch bed sores. So you need ointments um, and medications in order to um, help with the bed sores. You also need to be able to move them, have the equipment to be able to move them so they can um, switch from side to side on their back. Don't think you'd ever want to put them on their stomach because that could cause breathing issues, obviously. Um, so if, if somebody is very overweight, you also might need, um, to prevent the, um, to not say this right, but gen more gingerly put, if they have fat rolls that you may need to be able to lift them up and put, um, a salve or something in there to prevent them from rubbing. Or I have also found cornstarch and just a brush if you lift up a fat roll and put it in there between the two fat rolls. I'm sorry if this sounds rude, but I'm not trying to be. But to make it easier to have them not end up with sores or being galled or anything like that. Um, if you have 
um, breasts that are very large. You could put some um, talcum powder or cornstarch to pe keep them from rubbing or different things like that. Also, if you um, have thick thighs, that may also be a good use for it. I found cornstarch works better for that in different areas of my body than um, talcum powder or anything else. So I'm going with cornstarch, plus I can use it as a food, not at the same time. But um, that's just a few little things that I have found that has um, really, really surprised me that I didn't know these. I guess it just didn't click. And um, so I'm learning as I'm going. and. So also look for some upcoming videos. We are redoing our kitchen floor. At this moment, I have no kitchen. And again, I am very sorry that I have taken so long to post another video. It's just been, I am mentally and physically and emotionally exhausted at this moment. And I'm trying to smile, but it's not always easy. But just getting it out there and um, talking to my subscribers or talking at my subscribers, which I do appreciate so much. So, um, I think this video has been long enough and please like, share, and subscribe and send this to somebody that, um, definitely share it. Send it to somebody that may be in the position where they have to start caring for an elderly individual or somebody that's sick. So, well, Charlie B signing out and I'll be seeing you soon and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.